Um, hi, I'm Andy, um, and I work at Shopify. We're an e-commerce uh, platform, and today I'm going to be giving you a whirlwind introduction to TypeScript. So first, a brief disclaimer. Um, most of the stuff I'm going to talk about today is TypeScript specific. But TypeScript is not the only way to bring types into your JavaScript. There's a lot of other really good options. Um, I actually first started with Flow, and then uh, we switched to TypeScript at work, and so that's what I do most of my time. But Reason or Flow or TypeScript, they're all great. Um, OK, so first I want to give you a little bit of why to use types. This is probably the most important part, and then we'll dive into some TypeScript syntax to hopefully make it a little less scary to get started. Um, so. I really want to talk about two main reasons that you would want to use types in your project. The first one is that if you're working on a large application, as that application grows, it's impossible to keep in your own mind everything that's happening. So if you're working on a small library, like maybe the overhead of types is a little bit overkill, but if you're working on a really big application, eventually it's going to get to the point where you can't keep track of all of the changes that are happening um, to functions or other interfaces in your application, but the compiler can keep track of that. So it's like having this like super powered um, buddy on your team who's going to keep track of everything that's happening. The second thing is that um, it's really hard to keep documentation up to date, whether it be comments in your code or whether it be a readme or whatever else. The nice thing about types is that they're kind of, they make your code a little more self-documenting, and since the compiler is going to be enforcing those types, it's a lot harder to get them out of date. It's definitely possible, um, and it's definitely easy to do things that still make it hard to understand, but it's a little bit of a help to um, make your code easier to jump into. All right, so um, basic types. We're going to start going pretty fast through TypeScript syntax here uh, just to kind of do an overview. So here is like sort of a hello world of some very primitive types in TypeScript. You can see that it looks a lot like normal JavaScript, but you have a colon and then the name of a type, which is how you're going to annotate your variables. Now, that actually isn't necessary a lot of the time. I would say that I, more often than not, don't have to add explicit annotations to my code um, because TypeScript is very good at inferring what I, what I mean. Um, you can also see here, this is where the benefit starts coming in. So this screenshot is from Visual Studio Code, um, but it's really just a reflection of the error that the compiler is outputting. So you're not tied to using VS Code with TypeScript. Um, but you can see it has a red squiggly under this index of call because a Boolean doesn't have um, a method called index of. All right, so arrays. This is a little more complicated, but looks much the same. So you have an annotation, and you just put square brackets after it to say that it's an array. So you can see here, I have this array of foods, um, and if I initialize it to these strings, it's happy. If I push in a new string, it's still happy. But if I were to try to initialize it to an array of numbers, or if I were to push in a Boolean, it's going to complain at me, and I would have to fix that. Functions. So this is where things get really exciting. So your functions, you're going to be importing them all over the place in your application. Before, those were like pretty contrived examples because like you can look at your variables three or four lines above or you know even in the same file. But a function, this is where you're going to be able to catch things across your whole application as you um, import things. So you can see here that I typed my parameter with that same annotation. Um, there's another annotation after the arguments list, which is the return type. And then we just write normal JavaScript on the inside. So if I pass it race car, it's going to be happy. But if I pass it a Boolean, then it's going to complain. Um, again, TypeScript is pretty smart at inferring what my variables are going to be and what my return types are. So we can actually omit that return type um, if you don't want to do so much typing. All right, unions. Um, this is, again, a little bit more of an advanced feature. So you can think about a union like an or. Um, this is something that I use all the time. So here, like, I want to say that a vegetable can be a broccoli or a carrot. Um, I say that fruit can be any of these fruits. And then I can also use unions with types. So I can say that an ingredient for this restaurant is going to be either a vegetable or a fruit. Um, and it can be any of those values. So then if I'm making a recipe for juice, and I give it broccoli and watermelon, it's happy. But if I try to make this sludge drink out of bread and bacon, it's going to be very unhappy because that's neither a vegetable nor a fruit. All right, interfaces. This is going to be our last type, and then we'll go through a short little example. Um, so interfaces, this is how you type objects. Uh, so this looks a lot like plain object notation. 
you have a colon, and then instead of the value, you put your type name. Um, you also can use all of these other features inside of your interfaces. So here we have a union between a bunch of animals. You can have your favorite animal. You can make it optional by allowing nulls, um, and then TypeScript will help you check null before you try to access those values or anything like that. All right, so most of my day I spend writing React. Um, and that is like where TypeScript really shines for me. I like it pretty well when I'm writing plain TypeScript, but for React components, I think it's the bee's knees. So um, here we have a really simple example. Um, if you've used the prop types package, this probably looks very familiar to you because in prop types, you also have to like declare your props. Um, the nice thing about this is you get a little more help from the compiler and it happens at compile time instead of at runtime. Uh, the other nice thing is that you don't have to include the prop types package. Um, all of this gets stripped out at compile time, and then um, you ship a smaller bundle a little bit. Um, so just to walk through this, we have our props. We're going to have one prop called size that accepts either small, medium, or large. Um, and then we just pass it into our component as usual. Um, and you can see here that inside my component, I have very little TypeScript specific syntax. Uh, it really looks pretty much like normal JavaScript. Um, and then this is what it looks like to use that. So I import my icon component, and if I don't give it any props, TypeScript is going to complain to me because I told it that I was expecting some props. Um, here, if I give it size, it can suggest to me what those props should be. So this is really nice when you're like using a design system inside your company because you can know exactly what the values are supposed to be. Again, this is the VS Code interface, but um, when you run the TypeScript compiler, it gives you this exact same suggestion where it'll list what it's expecting. And if I give it something that it's expecting, it will be happy and it'll compile my code and I can run it. So, I hope that has made TypeScript a little less mysterious. Uh, you can find me at A.S. Mokler. Thank you very much. Thank you.